What's up, everybody? Marzi Montezer here. Welcome back to the We'll Name It Later show. This episode, I have the amazing pleasure of this amazing talent sitting next to me. Welcome, please, Mark Del Castillo. Thanks, well, brother. Marky, thank you for thank you for being here. And I want to dive right into it, man. So to ask you how long you've been doing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I want to tell a uh, uh, real back, a little backstory. Okay, I want to. I'm I'm opened up for his older brother um, at a club called Backstage in Houston. Discovering Mark for me was a completely. It's a. It's been. It's been an absolutely new venture in the guitar realm for me because I did not know he existed. I went to see him, and it was like the time I saw Eric Johnson. I did not know what to expect, and I was blown away. And I've been blown away by him since then. And you were rather young. And since then, we've become friends. And, you know, and I've been uh, asked to play on stage with you and and get to know you as a person and your personality a little bit. And you fl you have flowered into this amazing thing, spirit. Uh, Thanks, you, you know, your photography and your filming and you know, everything that you do is just amazing. Thanks, and man. the band keeps on getting better and better. And you're now you're in films. I wanna, so that's the backstory of like me not knowing who you were. Right. I don't want to talk too much about it. I'll probably edit it all out, maybe not. <laughs> but man, li tell me a little bit about yourself because the day that I did see you and uh -huh. I saw I saw Rick and I said, Rick, who is that? He goes, it's my brother. And I said, I didn't even know you had a brother. He's like, he was like not even in high school when we were jamming or something like that. Yeah. And there you were. And then so I have I'm so curious to know how this journey <laughs> began with you. Well, I mean, uh, like Rick said, he's eight eight years older than me. Um, so by the time he started touring, I was I was real young. He he left the house right after um, right after high school. Right after he graduated, he, he went on tour and started touring all over. So I was only like ten. Wow. You know, maybe nine, ten. Um, and um, so I really didn't. You know, he he. I knew he played, and it was cool to catch him. You know, every once in a while, I'd be able to go see a show, and it was a big deal to see him play. You know, in our valley uh, valley shows, because he was a pretty big deal in the valley. You know, like with his playing, he made a, a pretty good name for himself. And so he he would come home every now and then from tour, and and he you know it was always exciting to see your big brother. Like, oh, he's back home, you know. And and he every now and then he had a guitar. You know, he would bring a guitar in, and he left the guitar sometimes and and uh i always wanted to pick it up and he left a, a, a it was called a spiegel guitar it didn't have any or it did have strings when he, when he left it but i played it i started playing tinkering around on that and there was no internet back then there was no anything like that so it was just kind of like self-taught like kind of figuring things out and um i played that until the strings popped and I would restring the strings. Wow. Like I'd tie the ball at the end. And so by the end of it, they sounded terrible. <laughs> I mean, they were so out of tune and so ringing, ringing and stuff. But I didn't care. I mean, I was just playing guitar in my in my mind. And and I, I was just fiddling around with guitar. I didn't really know anything about theory. How old were you at this time? I was time? probably about 12, 12 or 13. And when you say home, where, where was that? Down in Brownsville, Texas. Brownsville, yeah, nice, where we grew up. Nice, nice. Uh, we were born and raised there, both Rick and I. Nice. And so... Uh, you know, Rick would come back and go and come back and go. And, and I, I, I started playing a little bit more with some friends around, around my neighborhood and they were all into Metallica and Slayer and, and Megadeth and all that. And so I started learning the first four strings, like the sixth string, the fifth string and the fourth string. I didn't touch the, the top three for like five years, maybe, maybe, no, maybe about four years. Wow. And it was like, that was like other world. That was Kirk Hammett stuff. You know, that was like, ah, oh, that's not me. I'm going to play rhythm, you know, be James Hetfield. And, you know, I just didn't appeal to me. And I didn't think I had the talent to do that for a long time. You know, I just was, con I was content playing rhythm. Such a big part of playing. Yeah. And, and, um, and then Rick came home and he accidentally forgot a cacophony tape. <laughs> he left it. He left it in, uh -oh. in the room he was in, and he went back out on the road. And I picked up the little cacophony tape and I popped it in, and it was heavy like Metallica, like jing 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 jing. You know, I was like, oh, the riffs were were real heavy, and I was like, yeah, cool. And then, then Marty Friedman and Becker, Jason Becker started soloing. And I was like, it was like one of those moments where you're like, whoa, what, what is, is this? this? This is not Kirk Hammett. This is something completely yeah. crazy, you know? And I said, I want to do that, you know? And that's when my old 
world change to wanting to play lead. You know, it's like I wanted to play that. The so Marty arcade. Freeman and Jason Becker had a hand in they, you. They had the, the they made me switch from rhythm to, to lead. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. I had no idea. And it yeah. was just truly amazing. Yeah, and, and honestly, I learned how to play arpeggios before I even learned to scale. Because wow. uh, because uh, I, a friend of mine let me borrow a little Casio keyboard, and it had one of those auto accompaniment. You hit a button, it goes, and you hit another one, right, and, you, right. and you could play chords, like two two note chords, and it, and, and it had a little slider that said arpeggio. And so you could separate everything out and then just play the arpeggio. So I, I heard it and it was like, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, it sounds like a cacophony. And so I slowed it down to figure out my arpeggios, doom, do, 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 with the keyboard helping me like, like a metronome. Oh man! And I would speed it up and play along with it and speed it up and, until I was playing with it, you know. And so that's how I, I didn't know scales. I didn't know, I didn't know what arpeggios they were, you know. So it was, so you it was discovered weird. this and figured it out. It's yeah. so it's so it's, it's so in, it's interesting and creative <laughs> in its own way. You did it by getting a keyboard and slowing down because I, I know some they have the arpeggio yeah, setting, right? And you figured it out that way, yeah, through yeah. a keyboard. Yeah, before I even knew a scale or even knew what. And you what, practiced it with that with, with certain with, speeds. Yeah, and yeah. Until you got locked it, it in. Yeah. Oh, so it man. was like a metronome. It takes so much discipline to uh, do this. And, and you're, you're playing. Yeah. I have to say, when you play. You know, you wouldn't know how loose and how much fun you're actually having up there because you play so disciplined. And it freaks me out when you actually pick the stuff that you do behind your, behind your head. That freaks me out because, like, hey man, I'm just, I was like <laughs> over the top playing, you know? You know yeah, yeah. It's, it's just fun. not like bang, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> you're really getting it and playing behind, you know, back of your head. Nice. Yeah. No, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that that's basically where I started, you know? And and then Rick would come home and I was I would practice you know, hard pieces and show it to him. Like, hey, check out, I can play Flight of the Bumblebee now. You know, oh, and stuff wow. like that. And those, like, things that, that I worked for, you know. So I, you're a bedroom player. Yeah. Well, we were all, what, yeah. bedroom, but are you playing in a band at this No, point? no, I was not yet. 15, 16, you know, so I wasn't even able to get so out. you still woodshedding. Yeah, wood I was woodshedding for, like, four or five years just in the house, you know. And then finally when I graduated from high school, uh, I, I joined a band in, um, first year of college actually i met a guy uh, all that time i didn't know my scales or nothing i was just playing arpeggios going blah, 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 and playing uh, playing that's, you know that's amazing but the, those are chords and yeah you, you, yeah but were, i didn't put it together you yet. were making movements though with it right? yeah and i didn't put it together yet until a oh. friend of mine in college we both took the same speech class speech writing or something and you know the teacher paired us together uh you you like guitar and you like guitar you told me in your notes so you guys work together and so I was like that's how i met him i was like hey you're a guitar player cool right and so we ended up started jamming together and uh he came over to the house and he would play these riffs and and he was like you solo and and i, I started solo i only knew one i didn't even know what it was i got it in a guitar magazine it was a aeolian scale um it was actually it was a e phrygian which is a aeolian right and so that's the only scale i knew our, our mode I knew and so I just started soloing that and he was soloing he was playing an E and just one note off you know F sharp to F and he was he stops playing he was like dude what are you doing you're playing the wrong scale and that was like boom like I, <laughs> talk about feeling good because at that point I was going bloo, 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 bloo. I was able to do all this stuff and the moment he he said that I was like I don't know I don't know crap you know I need to I need to learn what I'm doing you know it, it humbled me immediately boom mm -hmm. And so he left, and I wrote out, I, I, I figured out, I knew one scale, right? And, and then I kind of knew where the octaves were, so I started writing out the fretboard, every, like drawing it, physically drawing the fretboard on a piece, piece of paper. And I started, I go, okay, that's, that's E, I know that's E. I flip it over, next one, that's F, and then that's F sharp. And then by the time I got to like G, I was like, wait a minute, this is the same scale, it's just moving up. You know, it wow. freaked me out, because I thought they were all different scales, so I thought it was like, I don't know why I'm gonna remember that. Yeah, you know. And so anyway, that's a, that's the cool thing about the guitar. Yeah, of all the disadvantages they have, that like you know, similar shapes you can move. Symmetry, around. yeah, the symmetry and the piano's and, not that way. And, yeah, no, no, it's not. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, Somewhat. exactly. But once I saw that, I'm a real visual person on the guitar, and once I saw patterns, it it just everything opened, you know. So now I see everything in patterns on guitar, you know, octaves and. And boxes and that's just the way i see it you know so and you move about them pretty pretty <laughs> freely and, and and in the del castillo show 
you guys do between you and Rick, you guys do a lot. Both rhythmically and playing wise, you know, both dynamically, you take it from, you know, super lows to super, super highs. And when you really get going, man, the guitar starts shooting fire out of it, man. Because you do, like, yeah, it's the first time I saw you, I was like, man. And it's it's not the technical ability either, it's the phrasing and the playing and the playing uh-huh. that you're playing. It's, it's, Thanks, it's, like, it's like super passionate, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me, man, what attracted you to the guitar? Uh, what attracted me to the guitar was, was I don't know, my brother was playing it before me, well before me. And, so it was know, kind of like in your blood, huh? Well, it, it was kind of like my dad played guitar, too. Oh, wow. um, He played on the side. He didn't really play seriously. He would play only when he had a few drinks and he, and he wanted to cut loose and he'd sing Hank Williams songs and stuff. So I always saw that. And he played piano, too, only at that time as well, you know, when he was having fun. Man, I find it amazing that, you know, like you're too, I, I, I didn't experience this, but to have a father that picks up a guitar, even though it's just, you know, what just to have a guitar, and then piano, and having these musical instruments in the house. Yeah. So what, what kind of music did, was, was being, you know, your upbringing, what was being played around the house? Around the house, it was a lot of, uh, well, like I said, my dad, my parents were... Like, what did you grow up with in general, you know, well, like, growing up with, in and out of the house? Uh, in, in the valley, it was, it was obviously a very uh, Mexican uh, culture, and we had a lot of, a lot of uh, Vicente Hernandez, or Fernandez, and, and uh, a lot of uh, the heavyweights from that Spanish-Mexican culture playing in the house. My mom loved all the ballads, and... And um, and also, but then my dad would also love to play Hank Williams, you know, like country, which, you know, so he liked all music. And then when he got on the piano, he would play ragtime. Like, oh, wow. and, like and he would, he was like Schroeder, you know, he wouldn't even look at the keys and he'd be playing. And, and I was just looking at him like, where does this come from? Because he never practices. You know, I'd never seen him. He only played once in a while after having some drinks. He'd just get loose and start throwing down. And I was just watching him play that same song. He'd play those songs, but just flawlessly, without practicing, like, for months, you know. And so he had something in him that, that just drew him to music, you know. And so um, I guess it was always there, that, that attraction to, to music was always there. And then my sister, my oldest sister, played guitar as well. Um, and my brother, my oldest brother, played a little guitar as well. So everybody kind of, our, our second brother, Manny played drums, you know. So we, we are all kind of... That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, I guess it was in the family, you know, to think about it. All you needed was a bus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Family. Yeah, part That is amazing. That is a lot of musicians in one family. Yeah, yeah. So I, I get it now. Yeah, I get yeah. it because you you are, you you play very natural. Thank you. You know you play like it's a part of you, and yes. uh, you know they say when people make it look that easy, you they put a lot of work into it. Yeah, and so yeah. either have a lot of love or they're crazy, <laughs> or a little bit <laughs> or of both. both. Yeah, both. for sure. That's absolutely amazing. So what what did your friends bring to the table, outside of outside of like a traditional Spanish music? And- My friends brought Metallica and Slayer. That's that's how I discovered Metallica and Slayer, was my neighborhood best friends. And but did your brother have a role in this? No, no, he because he, he was gone. Yeah, he was gone by that point. So by you see him on stage. Next thing you do, mm-hmm. as a yeah, I mean, he come and come and go from touring. Uh, but when I first started playing guitar, it was just me and my my neighborhood friends hanging out, and and they 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 would one of them played guitar better than I did, and and he he was into Dewey Brothers and. And stuff like that. So it was a, a, a big rain. But he also liked the heavy stuff like uh, Metallica and everything. But he was the more diverse one. Who he would 
come on, hey, let's play a Doobie Brothers song. And be like, what? You know, when you're a teenager, you're like, what? <laughs> Doobie Brothers. And now I'm like, yeah, now we now we close our shows with Doobie Brothers Doobie songs. Brothers. It's like we all jam Doobie Brothers. You know, it's just funny now. But uh, back then it was like my friends were, were – it was and it was good to have friends, you know, at, you know, as a teenager – Especially ones that are better. Yeah, and to exactly to to peer pressure kind of thing, where in a good way, to where you're you want to get better so you can jam with them, you know, and you want to hang, you want to hold your own, you know, and so that was good. I think looking back at it now, that that was a good thing for me. He pushed you, yeah. And then how about your older brother? Seeing him live, like yeah, did, did that? Was that the first time you had seen? You know, well, I mean. Cacophony changed your world. Mm -hmm. Had you had you been exposed to that first before you had seen Rick play live? Uh, no, I'd seen Rick play live first, and and like I said it, before, it was it was like um, it it was I saw the I, I it just you know I was one of the fans in the crowd going yeah you know and so I saw that and it was you know how every, most kids you know want to want to do that you know it's when people see Kiss I want to do that or the mm -hmm, Beatles mm -hmm. and so I was like that and the fact that he was my brother just made it more like I want to do that too you know I want to do that also you know so he can do it I want to do it too yeah. kind of vibe and and uh yeah it was it was a good push for me so did you want to be in a band or did you always just want to play guitar or did you see yourself being in a band was that a Seems it seems this this all seems you know in the conversation has been so so natural such a natural progression in your life it seems like you always were meant to do this you know it seems like and the way the way the 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 story is being unfolded mm -hmm. it very it's very fine that and it's kind of like fascinating to hear because most of it I don't know but right. it's given me an opportunity to get to know you a little better and which is amazing right so um, when did uh, you start rocking out in bands and stuff. Well, when, when I got into uh, college, and uh, I think I, I told you the story of a friend of mine who, who I jammed with, and he forced me to learn scales. And then um, I... He called you uh, out. He called me out, and, they, and and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. It was one of those tail between the moment, mm -hmm. uh, tail between the legs moment. When he left, I was like, that's never going to happen again. I don't want to ever feel that way again. You know, and so that's, you know... That that was good. That was the best thing that happened to me. Otherwise, I'd still be me, you know, happy, content with whatever I knew, you know. Right, right. And this and helped you push it. It pushed to me. a point where you're writing this stuff down, right? And then through the writing this stuff down, you you realize that hey, this is the same thing yeah. being moved around, right? So right. when did you get into modes after that? Same time? Uh, well, I, I honestly I, I learned all the modes, but I don't really think about all that right. at, at at all. You learned where you know, everything was. I, wor I learned the map, but I don't think about you know which mode fits this best or right. whatever. I just try to use my and ear. When the keys change, yeah, well, everything just changed, right moves around. Right, right, and you know once I learned the roadmap, it was it was easy easier for me to move around. Um, but getting in a band, you know when when I um when I was practicing, like really woodshedding a lot, my dad didn't like me playing guitar so much because A, Rick was gone. He saw, he didn't want me, I'm sure as a father now that I look it back now as being a dad myself, I understand, mm -hmm. you know, when you're a teenager, you don't, you're like, yeah, you're just real restricting and you're mean and you're strict and blah, blah, blah. And now as a dad myself, I'm like, I get it now. I know what he was trying to do. And I know he was protecting me and his, he didn't want me to fall into the same trap or whatever. Or he wanted me home. He didn't want me to be touring, you know. The, and then also my uncle Wayne was his brother, his little brother. And he played with Alm, who played with Santana and Joplin. And then he fell into, into alcohol and drugs and everything. So my dad saw that path. Like, that's what's going to happen to you, you boys if you go down this path. So it was always kind of prohibited to be playing guitar. So I was playing guitar. Secrecy. In, in, in uh, you know, like... It, like footloose or something it was like illegal you know <laughs> to be playing guitar at the house you know like 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 the dad would get mad you know and yeah. so i was kind of always doing it you know so in secret so the woodshed to practice i'd go to the music store the local music store oh, wow. and i was practicing all my blue, 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 diminished arpeggios all my scales and runs and metronoming and they let me practice there you know because the guys knew rick the guys working there knew rick they knew i was rick's little brother the manager knew that. So I practiced, I would go there in the summers and practice every day, you know, and, and annoy the hell out of them, I'm sure, you know. And then one one day, one of the guys working there was a drummer, and he was like, hey, man, we need a guitar player. A guitar player quit or something. And 
we need you to play Thin Lizzy. Can you play Thin Lizzy? You know, and I was like, I have never played Thin Lizzy before in my life. And so the manager, who was best friends with Rick and had been in a band with Rick, came down and he was like, all right, you show me one of your, you show me one of your fast licks and I'll show you Thin Lizzy. And I was like, all right. So we started trade. I was like, this is something I, I don't know. This is an arpeggio I learned. And I'd show him something. And he'd show me. And it was like so cool. I've learned all these songs from this one guy in the store. And I joined this band, all cover music, all um, a variety band, like of classic rock and modern rock. But we also had to learn like Rush. And I mean, it opened my ears to so many Santana, Stevie Ray, all these bands that I didn't even think of, you know. And the best thing to happen to me, another one of those things, joining that band created a musical atmosphere that I was unaware of. That's amazing. That's awesome. You know, so that, yeah, there's just a lot of, a lot of little big, big jumps, you know, and great discovery. Yeah. In my musical career and a lot of important people that were, that were pivotal for my development as a, as a player, you know? So if this person had said this, I wouldn't have done this. And if this person had said, asked this, I wouldn't have gone here, you know? So it was just like, Kind of crazy how life works, you know. It is the it people is. you meet, especially when you look back and you put things in perspective. How key moments, what key moments those were. Yeah, yeah. Did you have guitar lessons? Uh, I didn't take because it doesn't sound like you. It seems, no. sounds like you would you would take direction and then go t- towards that path. Right. I I never took guitar lessons. Um, when I got into college, I thought I wanted to major music, so I I studied applied guitar, which was classical. You know, and that's not the same as, as, you know, and that, by that point I had already been playing out live, you know, so mm-hmm. I thought, oh, that's what I want to do with music. And I got turned off by the whole music um, theory, the, the teacher, well, there was my ear training teacher is the one who kind of turned me off to teaching because I remember he gave me an assignment told me to go home and write a song. And we had learned all these rules about writing and blah, 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 and staff and writing out, charting out music and, and, um, I went home and I composed a song and I had already been writing songs, you know, at home on guitar and recording them on my little cassette. So I was like, I can do this. I'm going to go actually chart out a song, you know, be a professional musician, right? So I charted out a song and I played it on a keyboard and, and played it on guitar and I took it back and I got a C. And I was like, why did you get a C? He's like, and he's like, you, you didn't follow these rules. You didn't follow that rule. You broke this rule. And I'm like, this is my song. It's like, you told me to go write a song, you know? And he's like, yeah, but you're not following the rules. And I was like, as soon as he said that, I was like, I can't do this. I can't right. tell another young kid, you, you that song's not right. You know, I, I just in my head, I said, I'm done. I can't do this. You I know? see. So, because I'm still that way. I, I still don't feel like, you know, like what we have is should be gifted to everybody. There's nobody's better than anybody. It's just they're different. You understand? And it's yeah. like, and so everybody, it's not that I can't play like you. It's like, it's that we're just so different, you know? It's like my accent. I don't talk like you. That's the same way I don't play like you, right? you know? And we say the same words, but we don't say them the same way, exactly. you know? So that's just the way I, I feel about it, you know? You have to follow the beat of your heart, no yeah. matter how far or how close. You got to follow, you know, yeah. instead of following other people's, you know? That's that's amazing, man. Well, you've, you've taken that path and done very well with it because you're an incredible songwriter. Thank you, brother. Aside from playing... You, and, and you do a variety of songs. And I want to get to where you're at now, but it seems the story of how you come to where you are is is rather fascinating, man. Thanks, I didn't, A lot of it I did, had no idea, like I didn't, <laughs> didn't know. I knew, uh, what, the little that I knew about you was that you came from a metal background. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. And part of your playing shows it, you know? Yeah. You know, the shredding ability, it's just, it's, it's there. It's amazing. Um, Thanks, bro. Where, I well, let me let me bring it to the, to this point. Well, my question, my next question is going to be like, when did this happen? But I went and saw you at an international festival in Houston, and afterwards, you know, my I had taken my son to see you guys, and afterwards, I got a DVD, and then it was amazing. It was like the show was amazing. I was blown away. I was like high from it. I went home. That was a great, yeah, and then. That DVD was just like, you know, it was just like the show was like almost, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It was like yeah. one great thing on top of another. Right. But it was such an amazing DVD and it was so fun to watch. 
You know, and I remember you in particular because, you know, you got such a sweet smile. A pers- your personality just came through. Yeah. And you said, you said, uh, you know, you guys were doing all this stuff. And initially, it moved, you were doing it for your family. And I remember you saying that you, you know, your parents would, you know, once in a while, you know, your family would come see you and they'd say, that's nice, mijo. You know, but, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I, remember, I remember that specifically. And you guys actually did that shift to actually initially do Del Castillo for family. Right. So, yeah. and I know yeah. we kind of like talked about this earlier, but it wasn't on camera. It yeah. was when we were like in the, yeah. in the other room. So, if you don't mind, elaborate on that. Like how did Del Castillo kind of like you know how did this whole thing start from being like hip metal guys and Rick was in Akasha and I remember right. opening it up for him in Houston. That was a rock band. Right. He played metal. You know, you got yeah. Marty Freeman in you, yeah. Cacophony, and then yeah. when I see you guys, you both ripping on acoustic guitars. And not, you know, like, got, got the pedal board, got the amps, like, perfect sounds, different EQ differently, mm-hmm. and it's just like, where did this journey begin? Well, uh, the, um, the, the Del Castillo sound, you know, came, came about, you know, like, like we said, we wanted to, it came out as a Christmas present initially for our parents, you know, because huh. Rick and I discovered both that he would like to play his Spanish guitar stuff, and I was, like I, I mentioned earlier, I was already recording my own songs, and a lot of them were just Spanish things I'd written, instrumentals, right? And so we were going to just do an instrumental album. That's what we, we, just nice, soft background, Latin, instrumental, Spanish guitar music for our parents, you know, because we knew they would appreciate that. Um, something they could listen to, you know? And um, so we started working on, and, and I, I think I talked to you in the other room about uh, the whole journey for the Spanish, crazy Spanish guitar playing stuff became from me being asked to, to guest solo on one of Rick's students' um, songs that they, Rick recorded at his studio. He's like, hey, get Mark to play on this too. So I came in and I listened to it and it was, it was very similar to Del Castillo style. It was really, really, like what became Del Castillo later. It's kind of funny. It, it, it had that Gypsy Kings kind of hop, you know, and I was like, and I had been really listening to Struns and Farah at that time, just in my, you know, just listening to it, like, oh, that's so, those guys are so crazy, awesome, you know? It was like, they were like the Latin Paul Gilberts, you know, mm-hmm. to me, because I was in the Racer X, too. And so when they, I got approached to do this one song, get solo on it, I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best Struns and Farah impersonation and, and give it my go, give it my all. And, and, and so I wrote a solo out. And I would shedded it for like a month with a metronome, you know, because I wasn't playing nylon like that. So I had to really sit down and I'm going to work on the solo. Are you ready yet? No, not ready yet. No, it wow. was one of those things You're where I, some work. I put some time in. And then I recorded it and it was and it was done. And it's one of those things where you hear back, you're like, yeah, that's cool, right? I'm, I'm never going to play that again. So it's like no stress off, my, <laughs> off me, right? And then so... and so Little we, did you know. Yeah, and then so when we came around to do... Del Castillo, the CD, the instrumental CD, the first song was actually written, co-written by that same guy. The very first song, Mi Cariño, uh, was co-written by him. And so I felt like kind of an obligation to re-do something in that vein because this guy helped co-write it and, and I did play that crazy solo on his first song. So I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I'm going to try to do something that pushes me, you know, as a, as a player. So I wrote another, another really crazy arpeggio solo, that just kind of shreddy Kruger. And um, and like I said, I didn't think I was gonna have to play it again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I was gonna ever have to play that stuff live, honestly. Uh, and so I, it was just like I just thought, you know, it was it was like it was like putting all this work in to cook this amazing meal that you don't think you're ever gonna have to do it again. Mm. So you put all this work into it, you know. But if you had you know you had to do that every night, then you'd be like, what? It's a you lot know? of work. Yeah. And so anyway, now. Now I, we recorded that song, and then we recorded all these other songs. And then once you, I set that bar for me, mm. I was like, "Well, I can't have just these these simple, not simple, but like they, I got to push myself for every 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 um, song." And once again, honestly, this was a CD for our parents. I there was no band, so I I was pushing myself to have fun, to be proud of what I was going to listen to. You know, I wasn't expecting to go play this live. So I thought it was a temporary push for me, and I was willing to do it. You know, it's like it's like starting this intense exercise program. Right, right. You have an end goal. You're like, okay, I'll be done in three months. I'll be done. 
who else as a guitar player that had an impact on you? Other than the... Uh, other than the two gods yeah. initially. Like, you know, what, what set in with your heart, you know? Well, I really, I really, when I got in the cover band, I really got into Eric Johnson. Oh, like, wow. I really got into his style and just the sound. Because, you know, his sounds of soloing is different from everybody else. And so that attracted me. And obviously uh, with uh, Stevie Ray as well. Because the best thing for, I think, any guitar player is at least go through the, the, the a couple of years of being in a cover band. Because it forces you to learn all kinds of music. You know, not, not a certain type, of, like a variety band. Mm. Like, not just learn... A metal cover band or anything i'm talking about learning a variety band like so you learn casey and the you know sunshine band or, or cool in the gang you learn funk you learn a little a little stevie ray you learn dance you learn you know and it's not the you know you have a lot of fun playing out live and it's you only want to do it for a little while but it does open your mind to music and it, it makes you analyze what other players are doing and it and it really shows you what you want to do. You know, for me, like I really like this, it's a great teacher. You know, I really like the blues the C V Ray plays, you mm -hmm. know, and I really like um Eric Johnson's playing, you know, and, and I really like these the solo to, you know, you name it, like the the Blue Oyster Cult. You know, there's a crazy solo on, on you know, um Don't Fear the Reaper and stuff yes. like that. And, the, you know, it opened, and Rush, you know, I'd never been exposed to Rush, so just that alone. Those are entirely different realms yeah, you're speaking. Yeah, and, and coming from Metallica. Yeah, and, exactly. And and the best thing that happened to any player, I think, is to be forced to listen and learn those songs and reproduce them live, you know. And in the Valley, if you didn't play it the way it went, you were you were one of those bands like oh those guys you had you, there was no room for improvising in the valley so you didn't have to you had to go past the just going through the motions right. you had to capture the spirit well pretty much yeah people in the valley are pretty brutal about about judging you if you didn't play the solo right that's you know? really really that's really a great upbringing yeah and 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 the whole community it was small enough to where if you if if you if you didn't play well, the word got around. You know, <laughs> if you played well, the word got around. You know, so you you what was your choice? You wanted to prove yourself. You wanted to make make some waves. You know, create some waves in 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 the valley. And so, so everybody has a desire, but but yeah. the ones that put in the work, yeah, are the ones you yeah know, that gain the results from it. So yeah. that that work for you seems to me it yeah. came rather easy because you loved it so much. Yeah. So you spend a lot of time with it, huh? And that's the that's the thing is when you're when you love what you're doing, it's not work, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I didn't realize I was putting so much work into it. It just I just was addicted to playing guitar, you know. And I still am. Uh, it's just the the back then it was always a discovery. It was, everything was new discoveries. I was just wanting to learn more and more and more. And you know everything I learned, I was like. Uh, I, even though you would learn something new, I always felt like there's more to learn. You know, it's like, because oh, you, you just discover all these players, you know, and Jeff Beck mm. pops into your world and you're like, where the hell has this guy been? You know, this guy's been around forever. Where have I been? You know, it's like, and stuff like that. Those are still amazing discoveries, Absolutely. you know? And it doesn't matter if they're old or young. There's some kids coming out today that you're like, what the hell? Yeah, man. You know? <laughs> and, <laughs> so, so these need discoveries for you. And that, and you said, made you and shifted you in in, the, in, the, in an acoustic sense to to kind of push yourself and go, hey, I got to do this and do that, in the Death Castillo realm. Mm -hmm. Going back to that again, mm -hmm. and it's uh, beginning phases. Right. So, what are these demos that you were doing? The what you're talking about, like the the Doug Steel CD, the first yeah, song, the first one. Uh, the first CD it was all yeah they were all just instrumentals and not not the actual first CD but actually getting to Del Castillo to begin with oh, oh, actually oh. making it a thing oh so you said you know you were out of your element and then you were like man I got to do this solo again live right right so and then what 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 happened did you and, to make you continue to do it well I mean I basically set a standard when I with all this okay so we had the CD right that that we recorded for our parents. Mm -hmm. I was, that was like, the first I was proud of it. Like, yeah, like, yeah, those crazy solos, fun to listen to, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then one of Rick's students came in. He was an attorney. He owned an, a law firm. He was one of Rick's uh, guitar students. And he was like, he kept hearing the CD. Rick would play it for him. Hey, check out our stuff. My brother and I recorded. And he loved it. And he's like, you're going to play. I, I want you to play my party. 
uh, my firm was having a big party and we need you we want you guys to play and Rick's like we don't have a band uh, you know we don't we don't even know our own songs, you know? He's like, get a band together. I'm paying you guys. And so that's how we, that's that. Like I said, there's certain people that are pivotal in Correct. our development and our career. He was one of them. He forced us to put a band together. Because otherwise, we could that would have just been a CD that nobody ever heard of that we gave to our parents, you know? And so he forced us to start auditioning people. And we, so was it, there was a demand for it yeah See, yeah thing, yeah right? he felt it was always there yeah but it had to you know it's, it's amazing to hear it how it shaped yeah so now you have to put a gang together yeah how'd you guys go about doing that well we basically got the guys that were on uh the cd like mike played drums on a couple of tracks a few tracks and so we we're like and i'd already been in a metal band with mike at that point and i knew he could play the latin rhythms because we were like a metal latin band you know millhouse was the name of that band and uh and so I was like, well, we got to get Mike to play drums. He, he can do it fine. And then for bass, we, we got Albert. You know, Albert's a guitar player, so we, really? got, we got him a, a full bottle of wine. And by the end of the <laughs> bottle of wine, he was, he was willing to play with us. And then uh, Alex, at that point, he had recorded two songs on the CD, so it was a no-brainer to, to bring him in. And, and we started writing more and more with him. Save him yeah. from the kitchen. Yeah, save him from the kitchen. That's right. Amazing voice, amazing talent, and I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know how you guys got together, all of you, you know, yeah. you and Mike, you know, because yeah. I mean, playing metal, I've only seen Mike play in Del Castillo, yeah, and no, I, I can't even, you know, your band and, and it, every single piece of that band is absolutely amazing. Thank you, bro. You go in there. And it's like going into a fun, you know, when you go to a good <laughs> restaurant or something, you, you come out feeling good. Oh, you man. come out and you, and you go, I've, I've shed tears at your shows. So, man, tell me, so, so, name, name some of these uh, some of these movies that uh, oh. that you've been part of. Because yeah, I know there's a few, but name some. Uh, Lita, Battle Angel was uh, one. Jeez, um, Spy Kids, two, three, uh, t uh, three, four, and there's a new one coming out. Um, there's also Once Upon a Time in Mexico, there's, uh, Sin City, Sin City 2, Machete, Machete Kills, Grindhouse, um, I mean, geez, there's, there's quite a few, I'm trying yeah, to Yeah, man. And, uh, <laughs> and We Can Be Heroes is a, one of the newer ones on Netflix, a uh, kid's movie, and, uh, I actually also did a Book of Boba Fett, uh, which was on Disney Plus, you know, I did, uh, the first episode, I, there was a cantina scene, and Robert asked me to... It was one of those things where it's like, are you seriously asking me to, you know? He's like, I want, I want you to redo uh, John, John Williams' uh, Cantina song. Dun, 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 dun. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so you did it with, your, with the Latin flair. With the Latin flair, and, you know, it was just it was crazy. You know, and he's like, I want you to play something fast at the end. So, so that, you you know, play fast. Yeah, like... <laughs> and it's funny, because he, he showed me the, you know, when they were filming, he showed me on his laptop at his house. He's like, check this out. I, I got him to feature the guitar, you know, I was like, and so the aliens playing the, the little guitar lick I'm playing, and it's so That's so, it's so awesome, crazy, man. It's so funny. You, you've, 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 like, come up so quick, <laughs> and you've given back so much. Oh, thank you, man. In, in such a short time, and, and it's, you, you're the, like, you're, you know, you're the young brother. Yeah, yeah. And you're doing so much. You guys are doing so, so much. Yeah. I want to get to what you're going to be doing next in the future i'm sure you got a lot going on on your plate mm -hmm. but uh you know i partially know the answer to this like what else do you like besides music and i know photography like walking into your house and just looking on the walls it it's it you don't want to like travel very fast because everything and, and it's just not the quality of the photographs and what you do with them they have like each shot has <laughs> Like a spirit or the symmetry on it, or the, it speaks to you. You know that yeah, you can you. capture the artist. Thank you. You, you know you did yeah. one with me, and it like it literally it captures something. The one we did with Rusty, I thought it was amazing. Everything I've seen here is amazing. What made you go towards that? I, I had always started doing. I had always done the graphic design for Del Castillo from the beginning. Because, really? Yeah, from two thousand one, back when computers were slow as can be. And uh, I did the whole website. It designed all of our look, all our artwork was basically, I was the director of that, you know, and, and I would bring it to the band because I felt like I knew what we were about, you know, um, more than anybody else coming in. And money. We didn't have a lot of 
money back then to pay anybody, you know? And so I was like, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know? And so I did. And so I, I did, did all the artwork. And then when we met Robert, we started working with him and I would go to his, his house and he'd show me a, a promo cinematic promo thing for a movie or something. Or when we started doing Jingo and he was like, check out this new Jingo promo. And he was, you know, it's him with a guitar. I was like, that's, that's badass, dude. It's like, and it was a photo, you know, I was like, dude, that is it just, it was inspiring. I was like, how did you do that? how did you get that shot? And he was like, well, green screen, you know, I did it on a green screen, you know, for the actors and stuff. We do a lot of their, the movie posters are on green screen. I was like, okay. So I went out and bought a green screen, you know, and got to get, so that got me into taking photos as apart from graphic design. And so I did green screen for, for years, for like 10 years, you know, and I would, I remember calling Robert from Home Depot. Hey, what color green do I need to get? You know? <laughs> and he was like, well, he, he was super cool. He's always been like a brother to me. He was like, well, you don't want it to be too bright. Cause if you're outdoors, it'll blow out too. And you don't want it to be, too, it's right, right in the middle. And he sent me a picture of the right green color. And so he was, he's always been super helpful for me, you know, and, and he's been my, it's, it's such a blessing to have somebody at his level critique my stuff. You know, I'll show him a picture and he'll be like, you know, he he would bust bust my balls all the time. Like I'd show him new artwork for Del Castillo, the C D he's like, ah, you should let me do it. I was like, Oh, you suck. You know, I was like, so but I love that's good crit criticism, that's good. you know. I mean he didn't he didn't, want he didn't like just it. yeah, he, he exactly. You want friends that are gonna tell you, hey, that you could do better than this. Yeah. You know, and so that always pushes me and always keeps me wanting to, well, what would Robert think about this? You know, and so when it became my photos you know, the whole pandemic happened and then, you know, we couldn't do anything and we didn't, our, our whole tour got canceled and I was online and I found this master class in photography, you know, and I really dug the, the lighting and everything of the photos. And, um, I, I shelled out the money for the master class and it was the first class. It was like a one light photo master class, Right. And then, um, it, it just took off from there. You know, I invested in all the time and all the, all the money in cameras, lenses, and I just became addicted to photo photography. Wow. And so that's, that's where I came from. But, it's a big part of just your art in general. Yeah. I'm taking it from guitar and out to photography. Yeah. And it, it's all creative. It's all part it of the process, you know? And, and you, so you're very creative with your, you know, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And, 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 it, and like I said, it's all, it's all from what I've, I've, enveloped myself in it's the cinema part of it it's the you know the photography the lighting you know and who i associate with you know with robert you know because his stuff is always always you know top notch and yeah. he works as the top notch photographers himself you know and so when i got to the point where i was doing photoshop and stuff and i and i started doing chingon photoshop like artwork for chingon and photos and I remember I, I sent him a photo i had an idea of him being like batman you know that 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 thing of Batman with the with the the light, right, the, right. the bat signal, and he's on the he's on the, the top of a building, you know, and he's in the skies behind him. I said, I have an image of that, you know, with you playing the guitar for Jingon. So I made it happen. I put him up there, and he sent me a picture of him playing guitar, and I did it. And then he was like, "Man, your Photoshop skills have gotten badass, dude." And, I'm, and that was like like the bit, first compliment. I was like, "Oh hell yeah, I've arrived," you know, with him. I've, I've gotten his approval, and ever since then. I show him my photos and he really it's awesome. And even when I started doing started doing video videos, um, I, I did a music video and I sent it to him and he was like, it was awesome because he was like, uh, well, why is this scene in here? Uh, why why are you picking up this flower in the scene? I was like, what? He goes, it, it looks like you're going to a grave or something and you don't go to a grave, so you should cut that. I was like, okay. And then I cut it out, you know. And it's like per editing advice, and but it was awesome, you know. This kind of critique, I mean, who who. You can't These pay for this. Yeah, you can't yeah, pay yeah. for this kind of kind of critique, you know. And so I'm just blessed to have this, you know. And I, I this kind of the friends that I have and the and the people I work with, you know. So I I'm mean, gonna it, drive here where we're talking about human souls being like flowers, but some are raised in the garden, you yeah. know. And they have gardeners coming through and cut out the weeds and put fertilizer or like you know like pure, you know, yeah. and it seems like you had, you were raised in the right garden. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you know, yeah. all, all, and then, you know, you have to also be a soul that's receptive of all this stuff. And you're, you're a perfect candidate for all this stuff. Thanks, man. You're doing great with all of it. And I, I, I'm wondering what do, what else do you like besides photography and playing guitar and writing great songs? 
and touring. I would love being honestly. I love being home with my family, my kids. You know, uh, I, I we toured for a long time, and it got hard. You know, as you know, it's not easy to be out on the road, gone all the time. And it, you know, I remember coming home off a long tour and being like, I really like my couch. You know, it's like <laughs> simple things. You know, and so right now I'm just enjoying being home uh, and spending the time with my boys and my wife. And you know, if once they're out of the house and back in, in college or something, you know, or or whatever going on with their lives, maybe go back out in the road. Maybe I'll be more receptive. But you know, I'm I'm really content and 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 I really want to want to build up uh, photography. I really want to work on that. And I only focus on film and and music for photography. I don't do like weddings or anything like that. It's not there's and I only do like music i i want to capture people like you said i want to capture them in a, in a certain vibe i want to create create moments you know i there i don't want to go take a picture of somebody playing live there are plenty of great live photographers i want to i want them i want to put them in a in a situation and, and capture like kind of like a annie Leibovitz, you know kind of like a cool like abstract kind of vibe you know like that that's what i like to go for so I, I want to definitely explore that more. They definitely have, like I said, they capture emotion, <laughs> which is art, you know, and good art always, there's there's something tied to it and it makes the human spirit move. You do, you do it well, both both musically and with your photography and your art. Um, what are your future plans now that you're going to be, are you doing some more soundtracks or? Yeah, I'm working on Spy Kids music for the next Spy Kids Netflix uh, movie. And, you know, just, just constantly, uh, I, you know, we got screenings this for South by that I have to go to for certain movies and stuff. So I'm all, I, I want to do everything, you know, that's my problem is I want to do music. I want to do, I want to do soundtracks and then I want to do photos, you know, and I want to do videos, you know, I just want to create content, you know, be artistic and try to get as much that's out there as I can, you know, before my time's up, you know, I just, oh, man. Uh, I love it all. It's a thing to hear. <laughs> Man. What are some yeah. of the you've had like this whole conversation has been high moments. What are some of the, like in your life some some key like whoa like you know like great. lower moments? Well, let's start with the higher moments, right? Then, oh, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Um, we can get to comedy, or yeah. what was, you can talk about what was one of the like what the fuck moments, you know? Uh, well, I mean, we you know there there were. There was a lot of moments as far as Del Castillo where, where we were right on the cusp of just breaking wide open and we didn't know why. And, you know, it comes to find out we just made the wrong choices uh, with management and people and we didn't know things were getting swept under the table. We didn't know, you know, and people were wanting us and and they weren't getting called back, you know, and stuff. So it was just all these things we found out later, which was really disheartening because yeah, we disheartening. were just like, we were ready to take over the world, you know, and, and but people, there was an intercept. There was a, somebody in the way at making the, the choices that were not good for us. And and uh, it was just, you know, it, that's hard to, to accept when when you know that you should should have been there, you know, and and we could always still be there. Our music. Thank God. I just you recently know. seen you. Yeah. And then then hearing you also talk about, you know, seeing your kids go. Off yeah. And, I I waited and did that before I went on tour in 2013. Yeah, the kids were old enough for me to leave home. Yeah, so yeah, I can see this. <laughs> it's not very come yet. Yeah, because, you know, in a big way, you planted seeds, and I know that you, you passed Texas. You're internationally known, yeah. and you guys won so many awards. Yeah, I know you're being shy about it, not talking about it so much of it, but so right. you have film awards and music awards as well, right? Right, right, yeah. Well, yeah, we've been pretty pretty blessed to to win all the music awards when we when we were like I said when we were really cooking in Austin we were just taking down names you know and and doing really well and then we got in movies and we got you know film awards with with certain songs and certain films and it, it it's a it's a blessing you know at the end of the day we just wanna we just wanna be heard and and make make music you know and in fact maybe you're not immediately touring right now but you guys just put out a song. Yeah, we did release a, a, a new single all around last month, uh, and um, you played it, a show too. Yeah, we played a, we played a, a a show. We got a show in Dallas coming up on the seventeenth of March, and um, yeah, I mean we're still it's our first single in like ten years that we released. So 
we're getting back out there. Amazing single. Thank you. I love it. And and you know the music has just evolved into to something different. You know, and we've we've been playing this so long, this music, our Del Castillo, that we have evolved as songwriters. You know, because the first CD was strictly traditional for mom and dad, and then we we kind of tried to stay to that. But add our little rock elements, and now the, the book is out the window. Yeah, we just we just the, write the, whatever like we want. You, the, the show that I just recently saw is an experience Thanks, in man. in both in in rhythm, in di- different styles, and in different so many different dynamics and emotions all packed into one. You know, and, and you, you go through you go through it all. It's an amazing show. Thank you, brother. I love it. What have you had any your base your basis introducing the band each and every time? Is one of the highlights of the show. What have been some of the funniest moments that, like, oh like you, that's happened that you know out of your out of your head, out of control that you just like you know. He's uh he we never know what he's gonna do. He's one of those guys. <laughs> he's we gotta we try to keep him on a leash, you know, on a cord. But when he goes wireless, it's all all bets are off. You know, <laughs> you gotta watch out for the headstock flying. It's one of those things. He's 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 a whole, I mean I wouldn't trade him for anybody. I love his energy and his enthusiasm and the love he has for us is infectious. You know he reminds us constantly why we're doing this. You know he's one of those guys that appreciates moment and uh, gotta love Bert Albert Macedo. I mean he's the heart of the band. He truly is the heart of the band. You know because everybody forgets. Everybody gets so busy doing day to day things and. And you can walk in kind of grumpy and just like, let's do this for her. So I got to go home, you know. And he's like, hey, you know, we're together, guys. You know, this is special. Remember that, you know. And we, that's, I mean, that's super important to have that. So at least one person reminding the, the band and about. You feel that about yeah. you guys when you guys play live. Thank you. you yeah. feel it. You can, you can, you can see his contagious. Um, Whatever it is, you could you could see him hitting like Alex. You know, you can see him say something and hitting you guys differently on stage. Yeah, yeah. you see the natural interaction going on. It makes you feel good. Yeah, you know, I've never been to one of your shows where I haven't gone through all the much, but I came out of it feeling so good about it. Yeah, and your band is amazing. Thank you, bro. Like every single element of it, Alex's voice is just, you know, it's it's hard to explain his voice. You and Rick are amazing. Your rhythm yeah. section and what they do. On their own, um, the solo sections and what they do—it's <laughs> like it's like school schools in session, <laughs> and also Albert, yeah. you know the heartbeat, of, you yeah. Know, and yeah. you guys, I I love you guys, and I thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing the stories with us. Yes. Thanks, you know it's been awesome. Thank you. Thanks brother. for welcoming me to your home for this. Thanks for coming. First man. interview out of town. All right. Thanks. Love thank, you, brother. I love you, man. Thank you for being here. Thank you. This part is the fun part where I go, hit the, li- hit the like and subscribe button right there in the middle by 11 Inch Beard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Rock so much, bro. man. Yeah, brother. I love you, love man. You.